Okay. Um, we're going to obviously start with call to order and roll call, which Monica will write down everybody's name who's here. And then we need a change in the agenda so that we are, we have to add um, new, it's not an icon. What is it? Uh, logo. New graphic. Graphic. It's actually, new what? Graphic for the town of, for the Human Rights Commission. We have a couple of choices for a new graphic that we can put on everything. I'm very excited about it because I think when people see that symbol over and over and over again, they're going to begin to get the picture that we're here. So um, have you all received a copy of that? It was sent out earlier today. Yes. Monica, we just need to vote to add it to the agenda. We need to vote. Okay, I need a motion to put discussion of new graphic and uh, motto on the agenda. Can I have a motion for that? Sabrina vote is it moves that and Janine seconds that. Okay, great. Okay, we don't need to do the roll call because you're doing that by writing things down, right, Monica? Yep. Okay, we need approval of the minutes of August 9th, please. Will somebody please approve minutes of August 9th? Janine? I approve the minutes as read, as written. Okay, Ray moves to approve. Janine seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, good. Let's talk about these. this uh, graphic. Now, do you all have those in front of you right now? Let me get mine up on the screen. What I What we need to do is to pick the one that we like the best of all of these. And Margaret put them up here in both color and black and white so that you can see what they look like because sometimes we will not have an opportunity to uh, print them in color, but we're there. it's gonna be on everything. So can I have some conversation about which one of these you prefer? Anybody? I like concept two, option B because it, it has the town, uh, you know, the town logo in it. The only concern I would have is that it might, if you reduce that down like the letterhead or something, I don't know how visible it would be. It, it yeah, and it's not too visible. And I had just the opposite reaction to that. I like the HRC thing in the middle because this will, it has, it has town of Mansfield or Mansfield on it. And I want everybody to know this is the Human Rights Commission. So that's the alternate perspective for those two. Anybody else? What, which one do you like better and what do you think about it? I I was like the both of you kind of torn between the two. I like the HRC one because it also had the initials and we always, a lot of us will refer to ourselves as HRC. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't, I wasn't totally excited about the, the, upper to the the first option um yes hands represent you know we're all together but i i like the emblem with the people that was that's what i went for more towards the people good okay i'm with you on that one sabrina what do you think i'm gonna um support the hrc with the people i, I think that that's more of a concept of you know unity <laughs> <laughs> okay um that's wonderful. At least we have some kind of, I don't know what I do to screw this up and lose my screen every time. There we are. Okay. It sounds like consensus is, um, I think it's option 2B. Is that correct? No, no. 2A. 2A. With the yeah. HRC in the middle. Ray, okay. That's fine. No, that's fine. I, I mean. You okay with that? Oh, absolutely. Okay. We have just made a decision. Do we need to have a vote? We need to have a vote. I move that we accept option. Oh, Monica, what do you want to say? Katie, nice to see you. Uh, I was going to say we need to move and second. Second, and okay. I move that we accept um, option 2B of the graphics given to us. And I need a second on that, please. I think it's 2A. 2A, thank you, 2A. Okay, and I need a second. Second. Ray seconds. All in favor? Raise your hand. Okay. Excuse me. Any opposed? No. Okay. Good. Very happy that that happened. Okay. Now this, Margaret said she was going to try to be here, but obviously she can't. So um, let me just tell you, I've been discussing with her today. 
Um, we can get little buttons made with this um, icon logo. It's an icon. I'm sorry. Words matter and I'm not doing well. We can get little buttons made and we can have them to pass out at our booth and we can give them to everybody else. And I don't know how much they cost, but I want to leave that to Margaret. Katie offered the, the um, business that you do business with. And I'm assuming Margaret knows who that is. So I'm going to talk to her. She doesn't. All right. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but what I want to do is get a whole bunch of these buttons and give them to people. And then I want to make for our table a poster that says, say hello, just say hello. And then I'm going to write hello in a couple of different languages and invite everybody who speaks a language other than English to come up there and write how they say hello in their language. And that's going to be a poster up there. Then we're going to have the map up there that we used before for people to put pins in. And, and I have made a playlist of music from Africa, India, I did it so long ago. Anyway, three or four other countries, and there's three songs each, and I have a little speaker, and I'm going to bring that and be able to play music from these different countries. And the only thing we don't have <clears throat> that represents lots of countries is food. And Janine had been talking about, oh, Margaret, here's Margaret. Okay, Janine, unmute yourself. Yeah, I've been working on, what you um, it'll, it'll be like on, you know, your standard paper size. Mm -hmm. And I wish I could share it. I'm not good at sharing every like with the <laughs> right. I'm not either. I'm the computer stuff. No, I'm I'm a mess. Um, but it was like you know, what is your comfort food? Uh, you know, is it fried food, sweets, or whatever? And I have uh like one that says Somali sweetbread, and it's a picture of the Somali sweetbread. Is it samosas? Is it uh fish and chips? And then like a couple of different countries, not just European, just European, Asian, and whatnot. And then towards the, like another piece of paper was like uh, fried sweets, all different types of fried sweet foods. Like you have your beignet, you have Wait, your What are you going to do with the pieces of paper? How are you going to display them? Um, you were saying something about uh, if I could put it on, like I have black thick poster board. I can put it up on there if you'd like. Yep. Um, uh, I mean, they could. You could just have it up there. You can have people talk about it, or if they wanted to put stickers of something that looked familiar with it, whatever you want. I could they can take put little button, little um, you know, those little dots on the one that they like the okay. best. Okay, I love that. And yes, put it. We'll put it up on a poster board. And I have to talk to Margaret. I think we're going to need three big foam boards to use and um, easels if we can figure out how to do that. So we'll use that for one of those for what you did. And that's great. So we got food, we got music, we got pins. Um, and we're going to have a poster that says, just say hello. And then we're going to write hello in a lot of different languages and invite everybody to say hello. And I'm going to, um, I don't know how to do this yet, but I've been reading research lately. All of a sudden I'm seeing all this stuff about people who say hello to strangers are men mentally much healthier than people who avoid strangers. Um, and it seems to be in little scrids all over the place. So I would I'll have to figure out some way to include that in whatever the visible display is. But saying hello is very good for people. So we're pushing everybody to say hello to people. And I think that's gonna be the beginning of this campaign. Um, we had a suggestion of several different mottos and I like just say hello. Margaret sent everything, sent that around to everybody today or Monica did. Did anybody not want to do just say hello or do, would you prefer something else as a little, we need like a three word thing to, to put with this pin. Katie. Would we want it to be more of an invitation rather than a command of something where it's okay. like, okay, how would hello? we say that? like happy to say hello. So you're letting someone know, like I'm open to saying hello. It's an invitation. I like that. Than, like, I like just that. say hi to me. Happy to say hello. I like that very much. Anybody else thoughts, other ideas? All right. Um, I would like to have a motion that our theme will be happy to say hello. And that will be on a lot, whatever we pass out and whatever we hang up. Can I have somebody move that that will be the phrase we use? Sabrina is moving. 
Okay, who is seconding? I'll second it. Ray is seconding. All in favor? Aye. Nay? Nobody? Good. All right. This was the business I needed to get done tonight because Monica told me that we got a warning that we might lose power. And this stuff all needed to be voted on. So we have voted on it. We're good. And I'm continuing to assume that everybody is going to show up at some point and we'll do some emails about who's going to come to our table, how we're going to set the table up, where the table is going to come from. I need to talk to Margaret, make sure I understand how that works. And I will communicate all that to you and we will figure it out before Celebrate Mansfield so that we have a place for people to be and a tent for them to be under and that sort of thing. Do okay. We, do we want to try and do some of that tonight? Um, because... So we can have some things uh, set up and I can just, you know, email out a list to everybody. Oh, okay. What do you want to suggest to me how to approach this, please? Well, I mean, I think getting the table and getting a tent is really important. I don't, I think, did we use youth services last time? Are we still able to use the tent? Um, I will send Senior Center an email to confirm that youth services, human services as one table has um, our tent needs covered through them. And then as long as we are covered um, through the human services slash senior center side of things, youth services would have just a plain white um, pop-up that you guys could borrow and I can bring down to Margaret's office again this year. So I'll send that email as we're doing this. Thank you. Thank you. It all happened by magic last year. I had no idea who did what. I just showed up. So now I need to understand. Mm -hmm. But uh, thank you, Kate. We do need, um, I talked with the downtown partnership today, we do need to make sure we have some sandbags to weigh it down because um, last year apparently it was really windy and it kind of, it started flying around, I guess. So you want to make sure you get sandbags. Out. You go to the dump with bags and you make your, make them or what? You, you just are friends with someone at youth services who has a lot of sandbags. You are unbelievable. <laughs> How many um, how many do we think we need? What are we using them for? We the easels blew over and we couldn't keep things standing up. That's all I remember. Okay. Well, we definitely need four to weigh down the tent, one on each post. Okay. Um I, posters, I don't know, maybe one each. If we could have I was gonna say could, is ten a reasonable number, Katie. So I would say like the sandbags that I have are designed to be photo backdrops sandbags because we bought them for um the wings at celebrate pride so they probably weigh two to three pounds each um so i think for each leg we might want to do two um mm -hmm. the senior center might have separate weights that are just a little bit easier i can check with them um to see if they have an extra set of weights and if they do i can just bring those over as well and if not i'll liberate a bunch of our old um well not our old but our ongoing use sandbags from celebrate pride um they wouldn't really be, I think, what you would want to weight down papers or things with because um, they just are kind of um, draping style sandbags. But I'll get at least two per leg if I can't get um, larger weights. But that's mm -hmm. all easy enough because that's just in the senior center shed that I can pull out. And of those, I think I have like 24. Okay, that sounds good. Now, the last time we had easels and then we had these uh, foam boards and the easels kept blowing over. But so how do you weigh those down? Well, the foam board is like could, a sail. Yeah, you could hang them from your from the tent, um, you know, with bungee cords or something, so that you don't have to worry. You know, they might blow this way, but you're not worrying about them blowing away. So I think we just need to think about, you know, what visuals go where. Um, but otherwise, you know, it's the same thing. We would just have to get some kind of weights. Um, but yeah, easels, easels are tough outdoors. They were, yeah, they were not, not helpful at all. But so if we have a couple of boards that we want people to put stickers on or write on. It um, could go flat on the table. It has to go flat on the table. It can't be hanging up. So well, let's just mm -hmm. put them flat on the table and we can hold them up from time to time if we need to. I think that's what do. Now, Margaret, can you provide us with those foam boards or should I go to Staples and buy them? You know, we have a lot of them that were left over from the community conversations that we hosted this summer. And so I'm just going to ask the powers that be, you know, can we repurpose these boards? Uh, you know, they don't, if they won't need them again, 
we'll just use the flip side and you know glue stuff on them. I I always hate to throw away foam board because it's so darn expensive. So right. I'm hoping that we can repurpose what we have. But I know that that map is a generous size. I mean, that's a big piece of it's foam bigger board. than the foam board, but you can anchor it on the foam board. Yeah. And that makes it easier to handle. And I don't want to, I wasn't even thinking of gluing things. I was thinking of pins so that you can pull the pins out and use them again and again. Yep. So let's okay. just assume we're going to do pins, boards laid out flat. And the let, and and so we have food preferences, which I love. But I keep thinking that we ought to get that in. Does the Indian restaurant come out and have like a a food cart? Does it have do? Katmandu, um, yeah. That and the the wings. Um, last year they had they they had like their infamous samosas and everything. Right. Um, what what were you thinking? That's what I was thinking. I don't think we can go any place where it would take anybody a lot of effort to get there. But that restaurant is right there, and if they have infamous samosas, that's fine. I don't know if they're doing a food station or not. I'm not sure who's signed up for that. Okay, well, I can. Add, I think I need to talk to the downtown partnership person and find out kind of what the peripheral things are that might pertain to what we're trying to do. And that's really the only thing that I'm thinking about because the, the pictures that we have, we need, we have, and I'm going to have the music, but I couldn't find a way to otherwise get food except if the Indian rest, if Kathmandu decides to come out and have a cart. Janine, what? You thinking something? Unmute. You're muted. I'm always thinking something. Clearly, I'm not thinking about taking the mute off. Um, I don't know if this will go through or not. Let me see. I might mess this up. I don't know. Are you? Do you want to share your screen? I'm trying to do something. Oh, okay. So to say, if, if you do, I can make you a host to do it, but just let me know. Yeah, it's not doing it. It's not doing it. Um, <laughs> I did it on, on slides, so then I can go to the library and print everything out, but it literally has pictures of Falafel, um, what do you got here? Just, just tell us, we have good imagination. <laughs> I hope so. Um, let me see. It was a picture of falafel, picture of Somali sweet fried bread, fried spring rolls. It's all comfort food. You know, what is your favorite comfort food? That's that's um, great. That's what you right. don't need to tell us. I trust you. And samosas, uh, Wiener schnitzel, <laughs> uh, Italian fried rice balls. I even put poutine in there because you know we do have a lot of Canadians and churros. Yep. I put that in there, um, and then uh, for types of donuts or fried sweets from around the world, it was. I, I I got something from um, Jewish and Polish and Italian and German and Indian, which is like gulab jamuns, mm, yeah, um, uh beignets, um, and some things that I learned. It was, a, a, I forget which part of Africa, but it was Koek, Koek sister. It looked like a, it looked like a, a crawler to me. Um, and another fried sweet from um, China, uh, Yu Tao, I think it was called. So I kind of had fun with this and got myself hungry and ended up having to go to the Indian place and get myself a samosa. <laughs> okay, I love it. I'm so, Thank you for doing that. It's very good. It's very creative. Okay, I can we finish this conversation now? Is there more we need to think about? Because we have a guest, and I don't know if he's having a good time listening to all this or not. <laughs> Monica, go ahead. I just have uh, a few things. One is um, Margaret is going to bring the poster board. Are we also, do you also have the easels? I do have some easels in the town manager's office. Awesome. What do you, do you think? I think 
easels. Oh, easels. Okay. <laughs> I don't know how many tabletops we have. Tabletop, but I'll I can check on that. Yeah, we had a couple last year. So then and they all fell down. So, but we can try it again. I will need um, people for setup, volunteers from two to six, and then people for breakdown. And those are the three things that we, oh, and a tablecloth. We need a six foot tablecloth. Anyone, can anyone bring one? Get you okay. guys a plastic one? Yep. I think that's fine. I don't know. Does somebody have one or do we need to buy a paper one? Uh, he said she can get us a plastic one, I think. Right? I'm sure I have many plastic tablecloths in our tablecloth bin. Okay, well then you are an endless resource, Katie. That's wonderful. Thank you. We're full of all sorts of weird things in my office. You need a rubber chicken? I got gotcha. you. <laughs> I got to come visit you and see what all this is all about. Okay, we so we need a tablecloth. I will be there to help set up um with and now is the question of do we have young healthy people um diversity and discourse has an intern but they are they have their own table um we don't have any interns or high school people this year is derek was on the email i haven't heard from him though um, derek i think is trying to decide what his role is because he's a freshman at uconn oh. so he wanted to know what was going on but he is no longer a high school representative and our other two high school representatives. Okay, well, who can we find that could say they would be there with me and help set things up? I'll be out there through the duration. Can you bring your son? Um, he can possibly help, but he also is involved with the NAACP. So he will be at their table for a little bit, but I'm sure I can get him to help me set up. That's all I need him for. Okay, we have me and what's his name? Ravine. Like when you fall off the mountain, you go into yeah, I got it. <laughs> okay. Um, and then, Jane, are you going to be there the whole time? I'm planning on it. Last year, I almost got sick, but I'm not planning on getting sick this year. Um, and is, will Barbara will be back or not? No, Barbara's going to be away till October, so she because she was real good too. Okay, so we need. Um, I'm going to need somebody to help. Uh, take everything down too i'm volunteering until six to do the whole event but i can help with breakdown at six. Oh, wonderful thank you because i know you have other jobs too sabrina that's great i'm and gonna be doing get there there's a lot of kids around who seem to be helping people mm -hmm. and i will just snag a couple i'll be there the whole day myself also but um i also am on the case to mansfield and the ad committee so I'm going to be bouncing around, but I will be there from the setup times till after. So, if okay, Ray, if you could place, show up, if you could show up while we set up, then just come as you can, and uh, yeah. that would be very helpful. Right. Yeah, okay. I'm going to try to be there all day, but um, I have not had luck with keeping my plans when things happen. So, um, I don't know. I'll try. You know that old joke. You want to make God laugh? Tell him your plans. <laughs> And I think that has all of us in, in the same situation. We're really uh, struggling to keep it all together. Okay. Well, I think we're as, we're, we're as put together as we can be at the moment. Katie, what? In terms of lead times, if you guys are wanting the buttons for Celebrate Mansfield, um, I'm going to put in the chat um, the different pin size options with the um, company that I use and already have a tax exempt item set up with. Um, I would want to get those ordered early next week. Um, so if people want to decide what size they want, I don't know what the budget is, um, but you can look on the website for the different pricing. Um, and then if someone can get me a design, honestly, by Monday, I can get them ordered and they should hopefully be in with plenty of time. Okay, well, we've got the design because before you got here, we voted on the design. So that part's taken care of. But I don't, what size, I'm trying to think three quarters of an inch. So the button size options are one inch, 1.25 inch, 1.5 inch, and 2.25 inches. Okay. And then let depending on right. the budget and how many you guys want, um, just let me know what you're looking at. And then I guess um, I can probably put them on my purchase card as long as I know the code to bill them to. Um, so Margaret, I assume you have the code and you could send me that. Uh, yeah, or Monica does. 
Okay. Uh, no, I think I think Sharon has it actually. If it's a P card, yeah, I can do it on a P is card. It, or are you doing PO? I'll, I have oh, P -O. P card. P card. Oh, okay. Okay, so then, yeah, I think Sharon is, is um, Katie. In your experience, is an inch big enough? I'm looking for a ruler here. Um, I think usually when I order the pronoun pins, I do. Um, I want to say I do the inch. Let me just look up my past orders. Um, did you say one point two five and then two point two five? Yes. So okay, when I do the pronoun pins, I normally do one point five. Um, as the size, so that gives it a nice enough visibility in those. Because yeah, there's a lot there. on this thing, and maybe yeah, this is a 1.5 pin right here. Okay, thank you. And and if it's our graphic and the message, happy to say we hello. Can get the message. We can't get the message on this, and we want to want to use it for other things. So let's just put the graphic on it. Okay. Because it it'll be cleaner. So if someone can send me that high quality graphic, and if that's all we want, um, I could probably upload it tonight and put the order in, and then it would. Yeah, I'll awesome. I'll get it to you. Yeah, I'll get it to you tomorrow. I'm not going to okay. do it tonight, but I'll get it to you tomorrow. I'm How not much money tomorrow, are we spending? So do you I have any do idea? It tonight, or I can do it Monday. <laughs> okay. But um, Monday should be enough time if you have it to me by Monday. Yeah, I think so. Okay. How much do these things cost? It depends on how many you buy, right? You need it, Katie. How many are you looking for? So 100? if we wanted 45 buttons, um, I can get 10 for $21. I can get 50 for $36. I can get a hundred for forty nine dollars. I can get a hundred. Yeah, I, I think a hundred's good. Hundred's good. We won't have to use them all at one time. Okay. Um, Thank so you. One point five and a hundred, and it'll be forty nine dollars. Wonderful. We can afford that. I feel so wealthy. And, and we're giving them away. Is that the point? Is that the yep, plan? We're giving them to people who come to our booth, and we're going to give some to the other booths. P flag. We'll give some to NAACP. And we'll give some to. Um, deliberation okay. discourse sounds good okay well i mean it's amazing what pressure does to support productivity not to mention katie um <laughs> okay Kim, monica is it kosher for me now to invite micah to introduce himself or do, do i have to do something official uh no go ahead okay hi michael why don't you tell everybody why you're here and say who you are and your organization and then we will officially know that you exist thank you hi everybody my name is micah human my pronouns are he him um i'm here on behalf of pflag um i know lisa the president couldn't make it my spouse who is um treasurer right now couldn't make it so they devolved to me so i'm sorry you're stuck with me everybody <laughs> um but I, I come way, um, just to give a little background, I'm, I, again, I'm relatively new to the community, been here for about seven years. Um, I came from Illinois. Uh, I work at UConn, live in Mansfield. Um, so happy we moved here, love this community. And um, PFLAG is a relatively newer organization to the area, not to the nation by any means. It's a national organization, but it's uh, Mansfield Tallinn is the PFLAG organization that I'm here with. What else would you like to know? <laughs> What are what are the issues that PFLAG is trying to work with right now? Yeah, we focus on the LGBTQIA plus community. Um, and so we have monthly, so I can kind of run down the list. Uh, first Sundays in Tallinn, um, there is a support meeting from 5.30 to 7. Third Sundays um, at the First Choice of Christ in stores from 5.30 to 7. And then we have virtual meetings second Mondays um, for LGBTQ individuals from 6.30 to 8.00. I know it's a lot to take in. Four Thursdays, parents and allies from seven to eight. Um, so those are the two virtual ones. And then we're available for speaking engagements, um, also support school districts. Um, and so, cause we come with the national backing because we're an official chapter, we always have the backing of the national chapter as well to support us with school, um, different schools and different um, issues that may come up. Um, so, we have membership starting at all levels. Um, we are hosting United Against Hate on October 12th. The other big thing is we're doing Living Out Loud on September 23rd. 
um, which is a big P flag event, um, just called Leading with Love. And so those are some of our, that's our bigger event that's coming up um, on September 23rd. So that's from five to nine. What else can I answer? Thank well, you for I was just the link up, thinking Katie. we may be able to publish your calendar did, on our page. Can we do that? Or can we make an announcement that you exist on our page? Just put that in the, I have to write a column for the town newsletter and I can announce that. And maybe um, if you could send me, obviously the name of the organization, the president, the contact information, I'll put that in my column. Great. Thank you. And we'll tell everybody that you're here. Okay. Just take, make a note of that for Lisa. I'll throw out that they have another cool project in the works with Q Lounge. Yes. Yeah, sorry with Q Lounge. Thank you. I, yes, you're right. Yeah. So Q Lounge is for youth. That's getting organized right now. It's almost, almost there. Um, and that's going to be located in stores. I'm not a hundred percent sure where hundred percent yet. I don't know if it's in the church on stores campus or if it's going to be, I know they're trying to get into the Rainbow Center a little bit too on UConn's campus as well. So we're working with that. Fantastic. So Michael, can I ask, when you work at UConn, what's your job? Yeah, I'm a director of the Office of Undergraduate Research. Um, and so I, I just actually took that position recently. I was in the Academic Center for Exploratory Students working and, um, and advising. But um, I've, my research focus that I've done so far is on racial microaggressions and the Black student experience in advising spaces. So um, my current older child is at UConn, just started there, and his major um, is in human rights. So he's double major in human rights and theater studies, which was, I was going to ask a question to you all, a couple of questions. One, how does someone get involved? I want to say I need to finish my doctorate, which is supposed to be done in December. And so I don't want to do any commitments until then, but I'm, I'm looking to get more involved with the community once that um, I, I finish that up. And then two, I heard you mention a student that was at EO Smith, but do you ever have regular stu like UConn students on serving? Because I know with the town of Mansfield, they have regular UConn students serving. I know Prabhas KC did that for several years. I don't know if anyone knows Prabhas, but he's lived in a community, grew up here. Monica, go ahead. So um, we do not have like a specific um, seat open for students. Um, we had tried to do that, but there were some uh, issues with um, the number of members that we had had at the time. Um, usually they want um, for committees like this. My understanding is that it should it's someone who lives here year round. So mm -hmm. if students are living in the area year round, that would be they'd be absolutely welcome to apply and uh, go through the process. And that would include your family. Yeah, that's what I was assuming. Yeah, yeah. So my, absolutely. Yeah, both mm -hmm. my, yeah, my kiddo and I would qualify. <laughs> yep. So um, the other thing that uh, you would have to do, I can send you a link um, to the application. You apply and then you would attend a few meetings, see if um, see if it's a fit for you. But also um, then Jane decides to say, you know, yes, this is a fit or not. And then you would interview with the committee on committees, which is, fairly informal like it's it's relaxed it's not you know Ray is on that committee what Ray is on that committee no it's it's council oh, I thought I misunderstood okay no, um but the agenda is already posted so that's probably where he saw that um okay. but uh yeah so you would interview there really briefly and then um be appointed at the next council meeting after Perfect, perfect, perfect. So it can take a while. So if you're like, uh, I think you said December was when you were looking to get involved. Yeah. I'd apply, you know, late October, early November because of the okay. you know, the number of meetings you have to make and all the things. So. Okay. Late October, early Thank November. you, Micah. This is wonderful. Are the odds pretty good that you're going to finish in December? Or are you seeing anything on the horizon that's distressing? Um, the, the goal and hope is that I finish. So we're going to stay positive. Um, I'm, I'm, as my advisor said, I'm on the 21st mile. So I'm, I'm almost there. I just handed in my rough draft and I'm now doing edits on the rough draft. I should get that done. In All right. You're there. Weeks. You're there. So almost there. The, the, I really need to be done by December. It's, it's when I want to be finished up. So that's, I'm going to really focus on getting that done. <laughs> Good. We'll have another party for you in addition to all the many parties that I'm sure you're going to have. Thank you. Um, if, if you can put your email in the chat, I can send that to you. That would be really yeah, good. Thank you so much. Okay. Well, thank you, Micah. And I'm happy to meet you. And we can now go back to our regular 
um, agenda. And I think we're on affordable housing check-in. Ray, have you got anything to tell us? Not, I'll have a more full report next month. I made contact with the committee. Uh, they're working really hard to try to get that. They're reorganizing a little bit and getting um, some of their, their leadership in order and whatnot. Um, it certainly is a hot topic item. So I'll have, a, I'll have a complete report next month after their next meeting. Okay. And adjacent to um, the affordable housing um, work that's happening, there is a new committee that is being formed, um, and that is the Fair Rent Commission. Um, so that is something that is in process, in progress, um, and I believe currently going through the Committee on Committees for those appointments. Mm -hmm. Um, Monica's got a stack of papers for it. And that is actually a committee that will hold power to hear complaints from current tenants who receive a large rent increase from their landlords um, to submit concerns. And then that group will be able to weigh in on if it is a fair rent raise, if there are caveats to what needs to happen to the dwelling in order for that rent to increase that much, or if the landlord needs to reassess the, the rent raise. Um, so that won't change what market value rental costs or affordable costs are, but that would be a mechanism for residents who are currently under a lease to be able um, to seek some support in any unreasonable rent raises. Um, so I think the anticipated timeline is somewhere in October. Yeah, I, I was very pleased to see that it. I had to just force myself not to apply because I really wanted to do that, but I just can't do that right now. I have to can only do this. Okay. So, Thank uh, you, Ray. Thank you, Katie. Moving to community conversations. Um, Amy is doing as well as you can do under the circumstances, and she's working with the discourse and dialogue students, and they are planning some kind of an event, and they have an intern or whatever you call them, who is a master's student who had a class tonight and that's why she didn't come, but they're going to do something and we are going to co-sponsor and it's gonna be around the theme of um, what would you like, what's it like to live in Mansfield and what would you like to see different? And they're gonna have a big conversation about that. I don't know how it's gonna work, but they're working on it. And I asked Amy just to keep me in the loop if they make decisions or start doing things. So that's that's happening. And originally we wanted that in September, but we don't know if that's going to happen. But Amy is doing very well considering what she's going through. So that's number one. Janine is working on a multicultural story hour. Janine, where are you with that? Okay, I... Um... Emailed Carolyn. She has that date tentative, uh, October 25th, I believe. We just needed to confirm the time. And I sent, I think I sent you the registration form. So whenever you need to fill out the registration to request to, for it to be done at MES, I believe. Okay. Um, we were looking at 345 as a potential start time. Um, I know in the registration or the application, whatever you want. The elementary school? I'm sorry? Elementary school? Yeah, MES. Yeah, Mansfield Elementary School. <laughs> and um, I mean, pending approval from, I know it has to go through the, the principal and then, you know, whatever the application process is. Um, when you fill out the registration, you also have to include like, how much time for setup, whatever. Um, so we have to consider that. And I believe I also sent you um, the form, a potential form that we you can did, use. And I ignored you and I will now go back and get it all and look at it. <laughs> That's all right. I just wanted to make, because I keep switching things. You, you no, send you me did, a question. And if I can't find it, I'll be back in touch with you and I will get going. It's like all of a sudden I seem to have woken up again. <laughs> um, no worries, no worries. Um, I also have one um, that we could, uh, you know, I took out some of the, like, you know, put your child's name here or whatever, but we could put that at Mans at Celebrate Mansfield. You know, we can have a little sign, you know, what's what's coming up. And um, the program oh, yeah, that we well, looked at was called true. My Roots Are Showing. Right. So that's where it stands now. It's just kind of like 
waiting for the registration time, whatnot. Okay, so I'll get the form and I will fill it out. And I love the theme my roots are showing, but I wondered if the kids would understand that, but I know the parents will. So um, I put on there, you know, the parents are, are welcome to come. Um, and what she will do is she will make it more for elementary kids, mm -hmm. um, you know, because it's for like the teens and adults. It's how to start writing stories, but it, it's going to be encouraging learning about your stories, your family stories, so that you can share it with other people. Yeah. And then she'll have a little activity at the end, like maybe coloring pictures of something that they had discussed or that they had talked about for their storytelling. So it's it's a segue into everything else, you know, how to get the kids. But what we're doing is legitimizing talking about differences. Yep. And that's exactly what we need to do. Yep. And, you know, um, knowing some of the kids, uh, you know, encouraging them, you know, not to laugh, to be open, to listen to stories and that sort of thing. So, but yeah. yeah I don't, I, there was a thing on Facebook today of some woman who has just recently moved to town and she's got a teenage daughter who likes to be very creative in her clothing. And so this young lady was walking along and some woman on the street out of nowhere started making fun of her. And I mean, I don't think it, what she described didn't sound all that unusual to me. She had boots and tights and shorts and a shirt and various jewelry on, you know, which is pretty normal. And somebody started mocking her. So I wrote her a note and I said, um, love to talk to you more about this and let's find out about it. So apparently people feel comfortable harassing people in some cases. Um, and I just thought that was, that was here horrible. in Mansfield? Yeah. And a relatively... Uh, new person in town with kids that are just trying to get adjusted to here. And I'm living here for maybe 13 or so years now. Yes. When you do stand out, even though it's not, you know, yes, I see that. Um, but if you do stand out, um, people do have a tendency to just kind of like uh, when, like even with my kids, our, my daughter looks does not look white. And one of the first things out of people's mouths when she went to the uh, middle school was, why don't you go back where you came from? From a kid? So, yes, at the at at, at MMS. Wow. And she even still got that even at high school. And that was what, like maybe, you know, years ago. So, but it still pops up. It's those little micro things that keep pecking at you. Um, so does it exist? Yes but it's very subtle. Right. And that's why we're going to make it legitimate to talk about differences as interesting. That's where we're going with all this. Okay. Um, then the last thing we have on the agenda at the moment for the community conversations is this multi-faith um, conversation. I've started talking to a retired congregational minister who's a friend of mine, and we now have contact information for a Muslim couple who loves to do public speaking. Uh, and the name of a very engaging Roman Catholic priest at Eastern. And we only have one rabbi, so that we have him. And um, we're looking to get the congregational, the new congregational minister in uh, stores to fill out the panel. And the idea is to give all four presenters two or three questions to respond to from their own faith tradition. The theme is what do we have in common and how are we different? And the, the questions, what Lois suggested to me was, why don't you ask them, what kind of a person do you think your God wants you to be? From your faith tradition, all four people answer. Then what kinds of relationships do you think your faith tradition wants you to have with other people? And ask, and if four people answer that question from their faith traditions, that'll be enough. And then anybody in the audience can ask anybody anything about the tradition that they represent. So that's what I'm hoping to do. I haven't got a date from the library yet, but I'm hoping to do it in Buchanan Center sometime early to mid-December, no more than two weeks before Christmas. So I th I'm pretty sure that's going to happen. I think we're going to be okay with that one. So we've got now got three programs for the fall. We got our icon. We got our motto and I think we're in good shape. And I talked to Glenn and he thinks we're in good shape too. So that's nice to have a blessing from the predecessor. 
That's about community conversation. So we need to now, now Janine was talking about, let's just have a conversation where people sit around and talk to each other. And we need a little more structure than that, but we can do that anytime you want to, Janine. We just need a theme, getting to know your neighbors, something like that. And we can set that up when you're ready to think about how we want to organize it and, um, and do that. I'm, 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 I'm impressed that you even try to remember that because that was just like a thought off the top of my head, like, way down the road after all well, of this and maybe we can do that in january we'll see yeah after all of this is is done like we need to we put those seeds in off these three things i will have courage to go ahead and do more so let's try it okay um <clears throat> say hi to a stranger we've revised that and we have finished that last uh old business is october newsletter article and i know i promised to write it but i forgot what i promised to say um, and it was a complicated thing where I was going to put two different things together and make one idea out of it. But I think what I'd like to do for the October newsletter is just introduce this um, getting to know your neighbors. Um, let's say hi to each other and put and throw in a little bit of the mental health background about why that's good for people and let that be our article for the month, is, if that's okay with everybody. Okay, I'm going to do that. I'll try to do that tomorrow or the next day because that deadline is very close. Thank you. Um, recruiting new members. Has anybody got anything we want to say about that that we haven't already said? I think um, we're doing pretty good recruiting and I hope we will continue to do that. And um, what, I, what I'm really trying to do is to generate public interest that we do have this Human Rights Commission and that it can benefit a lot of people and, and we would like a lot of people to be involved in that. So that's where we're going with that. And everybody, if you have, Monica's got people she needs to talk to, let's just keep that in your mind that we, if you meet anybody that you think might be interested, say something, Katie, yes. Do we have as part of the structure of this board limits and slots that we need to attempt to fill or is it kind of open-ended no it's designated, designated. that i don't remember so um i don't Monica, how many how many members can we have we have seven um four five or um wait hold on let me double check that i think seven are um regular members and then we have two alternates so we can have nine i'm sorry um Right now we have, we're going to have vacancies in one regular member spot and two alternates. Because Ray, we're going to ask Ray to become a regular member. Will that fill right. the vacancy? No, no, that's after another Ray one. comes up. Right now we have vacancies in two regular member spots and one alternate, but we're going to have Ray come up, so. Okay. Um, for Bear that in mind, Micah, and tell your son. <laughs> okay. And then we need to round up a few alternates and we are still looking for people of color and um, it would be really good if anybody knows anybody. And I would desperately love to have some, um, somebody who's a Muslim be on this group. So if anybody knows anybody, and Barbara has more Muslim friends because she taught their kids violin, but she's not here right now, but she has been working on that. So um, we need that representation. We need that voice. Yeah. Katie. Um, question for Margaret, because I know you're pretty involved in the local government academy work. Is there any um, specific one of those plans that would make sense to really recruit from um, in terms of kind of how this this work here connects to the different departments that um, people are going to be kind of doing their grand tour of? So um, as Ray will attest, um, we at the final session of the local government academy, which is at the end of November, we closed the loop on a handout that we include in their package, where we talk about all the different boards and commissions there are, where we hand that out. And we really encourage people to think about, you know, how they might fit into their community. Sometimes people want to run for an elected position, but sometimes people like Ray, like Sabrina, are you know are pulled in a direction to serve on a board or commission. So we do really try to encourage that, and we have a a committee or a commission leader um, come and speak about you know the rewards of of getting engaged with the community. So we do 
we uh, we hit them pretty hard to uh, really think about how they might fit in. So, and my suggestion would be that if we still have vacancies at the end of the uh, present academy, that we be there that that final night so we can actually talk about our program instead of just having uh, our name listed on a piece of paper. And I certainly would be able. I, I'd be willing to do that if it comes down to that. Yeah. Oh, I think that's a great idea. I would be very happy to do that. So just let us know when that's coming up. It's in November. Yeah, good. Um, there may be a different way to format that last session. So let yeah, let me think about that. That could be good. Yeah, seeing human beings is something we're all getting back to getting used to, and we're not real good at it yet. Okay. Um, I have um, can I just ask one question sure. about the multicultural story hour? Um, you haven't really pinned down a date for that yet. Is there a way to for us to work with the district um, to see if there's a day that that would really be an optimum day for attendance, right? You're thinking about it as an after school offering, correct? You know, I'm just thinking, is there a, an early closing day when, you know, like parent teacher conference days or, you know, a, a day when we think there might be more attendance than just a normal Wednesday after school? Um, you know, I'm just thinking if there's a, a way to fit into the calendar where we could, you know, it just might be worth having a conversation with them about that. Right. Um, parent teacher conferences, if my memory serves correctly, it's, it goes more towards November. Um, PD and days. And you're thinking about sooner? I'm sorry. And you're thinking yeah, we, sooner? we have a date now. Yeah, with, oh, October okay. 25th. Um, October 25th. Okay, I'm sorry, I missed that. All right. No, that's, that's okay. Uh, we were thinking 23rd, 24th, or 25th, but for Carolyn, 25th was the better one. Um, and then if you're thinking about early release days or anything like that, usually that's with the teachers at the end, um, kids go home. I There's not many that are popping up at that time, except for like PD and you don't want to, um, that's just a whole different ball of wax when you get into those. I, I understand that, that would make sense, but remembering a little bit of that, uh, but yeah, parent teacher conferences are a little bit later. Yeah, and okay. Well, it'd be great for us to promote it in this October Mansfield e-newsletter. And then I'm sure, yeah. you know, the, the school district will help us promote it as well. You know, if we get a flyer done and that kind of stuff. So that's what I wanted posted. to put that, right. I wanted to put the flyer at Celebrate Mansfield. And then um, I have that registration that I can go and put into the folders at the school. You know, I will help them out because I know they are, they're running short on, people <laughs> and staff, uh, apparently, and um, I can go help and put those things in there, but it would probably be a good idea to put them in the folders at least two weeks beforehand, and then yeah, they can get it back to, to us. That. Pardon? I said people need to plan for that. Yes. Okay. All right, I'm just making notes of what I'm going to put in that column. Um, Okay, member reports. Has anybody else got anything they've been doing you want to report about? I wanted to share about the uh, Mansfield Democrats. Um, I'm running for our Board of Education, and um, the election is this coming November. Um, our plan is to start door knocking in October, um, and that's when I'm going to go full blast with my diversity and inclusion. Um, we're also planning on neighborhood parties, uh, and I'm excited to uh, talk with the community and hopefully drum up some interest as far as, you know, getting people aware of the commission and, um, you know, how they can either be part of us or, you know, help support our mission in other ways. Thank you. Good luck with that. You have a lot of courage. <laughs> Yeah. I'm really excited too. I've met a lot of great people. Um, I didn't realize my son's pediatrician was a uh, part of a board of medical humanitarian missions. And I've met with Dr. Kalita Cotton, who teaches at UConn and also talks about, you know, the, um, twice exceptionality and the universal design of learning. So it's just very exciting. I, I think I sleep less now, but I'm so energized <laughs> from all the conversations. <laughs>
I think that's wonderful. Um, I don't. This isn't. Well, I guess it's human rights. I'm doing a two to, a two session discussion group at the senior center at the end of the month in the beginning of October called Death Cafe. And I was a little hesitant when I heard the name of it, but Mary Flood, who's the program coordinator, said she's been to them and they're wonderful. And it's an opportunity for people to talk about dealing with loss. And if they want to talk about their own death, they can, but they don't have to. But they can talk about who else has died in their lives and what that feels like. And, and it's really going to be basically a support group. So I'm going to be doing that. And that that is unrelated to this, but I suppose it's related to this. Everything is related. That's what I do. That's what my training is. And I'm really looking forward to it. I haven't done anything like this in a while. Katie. You give a youth services update. Um, it is fall programs. So we are doing fall programs and that includes bringing back um, Mantle U Pride at the middle school, which we're always excited to do. And it's really awesome to have a community that like just lets us host that at the middle school. Um, so we're excited for that. And um, spitballing dates for Celebrate Pride this coming year. And I already have permission from Netflix to screen the prom. Um, so that'll be an exciting movie to get to show because like the movies with representation are really limited in what there is and we've already used to so but having um, permission to screen the prom will be a good like moving into um the season for that so i will be working towards that with my team and reaching out to downtown partnership and all of our um, partner folks probably around the beginning of 2014 to get everything nailed down um, but that is always work in process and progress and we're excited to get to do that thank you um, communications, none. I, Margaret, I assume that means you've said everything you need to say? I think so. I mean, the CMF and, and then just, I guess, Janine and Jane and I will figure out this flyer and who's going to draft it and then who'll, you know, get it distributed and all yeah, of that. I will. So, um, Jane, did you talk about the Senior Center book? Was it a book discussion that oh, they did? Oh, yeah. And I don't know if that's going on? on or not. There are two people who work at the Senior Center who are in master's programs at the Yukon School of Social Work. And boy, are they creative. And one of them, whose name I can't remember, but I know her. Can you help me? Jamel. Jamel, thank you. Oh, it's, yeah. Yeah. Is doing a five-session workshop on healing from racism. And there's a book and a curriculum and she's running the discussion. Has it started yet, Katie? Do you know? Um, I think it is either finishing or it's definitely started. It's definitely started. And she had about six people and she was very excited that she got that many people because that is a very hard topic to talk about. And it was one of the first things I wanted us to do. And I just couldn't find a way to do it. And she found a way to do it. So good for her. And if it went well, I, I said to her, I put it in the last column that I wrote. And I said to her that I will uh, work with her to uh, publicize anything like that that she wants to do. And she's real excited about doing it. So Last update from our human services um, team meeting was that it was going really well. So good. We're all excited to hear about that. Yeah, it's not half as horrible as everybody thinks, but you got to get them in the room and you got to get it started. And uh, that's good. Okay. Um, I have one more that I forget many... because what? it's the beginning of the school year. So there's a million things. So I forget at least three. Um, right. Okay. One of the things that we have coming up this year is some expansion of services to EO Smith now that we are fully staffed with our new position that got created in the 2022-2023 budget. Um, and one of the things that we were asked from Principal DeLoretto was to kind of put together a parent resource that he could give to families, um, particularly around when their young people are coming out. So I have some draft work stuff that I've sent um, to him to look over with his team um, that is kind of a general when your child comes out as fill in the blank, um, ways to support them, the do's, the don'ts, and then some trans-specific resources um, related to you know, what social transition, what's medical transition, what's legal transition, and, you know, what all of that is. So it's not so overwhelming and scary for parents who are learning something for the first time. Um, so we're hoping that'll be a helpful resource for EO um, to kind of share with, with their families in the community. Um, and then another plug for EO, particularly since Amy isn't here, um, Deborah Holtgren, who is a member of the Region 19 Board of Ed and also serves on the Services Advisory Board, um, gave a plug for the next upcoming um, 
diversity, inclusion, and equity um, committee meeting that they have going on. And I believe it is October 26th at the EO Smith Library at six o'clock. And they are looking um, to increase the community engagement around what those practices really need to look like at EO Smith and what the room for growth and opportunities are. Um, so they are trying to increase engagement around that for all members of the community um, and to have it be more representative. Um, so I know she mentioned you you by name, Jane, um, that you guys are- The last time I tried to go to one of their meetings, they wouldn't let me come. So right. I'm very happy to attend. I'd be delighted to be invited. Okay. I think it's, um, she had said it's up on the website and that it's, um, I think, open to com community members in general. Um, okay. And she was going to kind of send us some more updates so that we can um, help kind of cross promote that even in our, you know, younger schools, because change does take so much time. So the reality is, you know, those students who are at EO now are easy to easier to reach from the parent standpoint than say the elementary students, but it might be that long work that, you know, if you have a kid in elementary, what do you want your high school to look like when they reach that and helping to shape the direction that that goes to? Janine, what would you like to say? Hey, is that the same or, or, or is it, do you know that, um, cause when I worked at the elementary school, I was involved with um, the DEI, diversity, equity, inclusiveness uh, group. Um, no. But since I left, I, you know, I no longer go. Different is that this? Day. Is that the same, is like the same concept or is it different? I am not entirely sure just because we're in the process of really building our connectivity to EO. Um, so I know they would be separate committees because they are separate boards of education. Right, um, right. So I would assume there's a similar alignment of the work that they're trying to do. Um, and right. just kind of really looking to see EO specifically versus, um, you know, Mansfield Board of Ed and how do you adjust you know, practices in the classroom to make sure everybody's needs are being met? How do you look at staffing practices to make sure there's, you know, representation for all of the students who are coming into the, the EO Smith community and they are really looking to build growth opportunities in that? Right. I know, I know um, Peter Dart kind of like formed that out of a recommendation from when they had everything overseen and reviewed and they gave the recommendations from a company saying, you know, you're, you're okay with this, but this is what you need to grow upon. So I was just wondering if that was like same kind of. I think the goals are thing. similar, but it's two separate systems. And so right. they're operating independently of each other, but they are talking. And I forgot to mention, I met with Sarah Dufresne yesterday, who is an uh, adult services coordinator at the uh, senior center. And she just happens to be on the PTO of the middle school, of the elementary school. And so when I was telling, and she's a real, pistol when it comes to all this diversity stuff and so, um she said well I think we ought to go meet with the PTO and tell them what you're all about and I said I tried that they wouldn't invite me um she said well I'm on board now so I said that's wonderful yeah, I'm here you just let me know when you want me to show up so I was very excited about that because she's doing this work in her job and she's also trying to do some stuff in the elementary school as a member of the PTO so I'm I was very delighted to meet her she has energy coming out of her ears it's amazing I had like three different times I was supposed to go and speak and then they would send me an email like the day before yeah. saying um we have to push you because we don't have enough time on like Whatever. Right, right. Yeah, I had the same experience, but um, apparently some things have changed. So that's very nice. I, I At the beginning of this process, I had no idea how long it would take. But now that I'm feeling a little bit better, because I do see movement, even if it's not earth shaking, it is movement. And these things do collect speed over time. So I'm very pleased with where we are right now. Um, okay, where are we? We are at the end of our agenda. Micah, you're the public. You want to comment on anything? No, but thank you all for having me. I really appreciate it. It was great being being here and listening to everything that you're doing. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for coming. Good luck with your defense. Thank um, you. I'm a retired professor. That's why I'm into that stuff. Okay. Can I have a motion for the meeting to be adjourned, please? Janine. Second. Ray. All in favor? Aye. Thank you very much, everyone. We will do all our follow-up. You may be getting little notes and reminders, and I appreciate everything you have done. Take care, everybody, and be safe in the hurricane. Take care of your house and your people. Good night, folks. <laughs> okay.